start this because there was a bit of a story that I missed at the start. And I'm just going to go through and introduce the stream again now that it's uh, now that it's been advertised again. So here's the intro. Goddess Poetena, the ruler of Angel Land, had a vivid dream of an evil force invading their beautiful world. She called the valiant warrior Pitt and sent him into a program of intense training for the upcoming attack. Pitt must now find the three sacred treasures hidden in Angel Land. Be brave, Pitt. Your long mission is just beginning. Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters. So just in case no one actually saw this, I'm very excited to play this. This is one of the games that I picked up at the London Retro Market and I'm going to jump straight into it and start a brand new game. And as I was saying a few minutes ago, I haven't actually played this game before, so it's all new to me. I love the Kid Icarus games, I love the one on the NES and the 3DS one's brilliant as well. Uh, okay, so this hint here says you can break some walls with hammers to find secrets. I don't know why I thought that said hamsters for a second. Must be tired. So, uh, got to go and find a hammer, I suppose, and then find out which bits of these walls we can destroy. And like I was saying before, it looks and plays pretty much exactly the same as the NES game, but maybe a bit smoother from what I've played so far, and maybe a little bit easier as well. Um, I don't know where I'm going or anything, so I'm just sort of jumping around and seeing what I can find. Here's a door, um, and a room full of bats. I was actually in this room a bit earlier when I just started the stream. Um, nothing much really happened in there. Uh, yeah, so I don't really know what the point of this room is. Uh, maybe if I kill all the bats I'll get something good. And I've got absolutely nothing. Don't know what the point of that was. So, back outside now. And you can sort of fly, I think. If you keep tapping the A button, it sort of does a little hover. Not really proper flying or anything. Although maybe you can later on if it's anything like the NES game. So there's hammers here, but they don't look like they're destroying the wall. You can just pick them up as they're floating around. So I'm not really too sure about that. And the level actually seems really big. Just running around it now, so I'm not really sure what to do. There is a map, apparently, but I must not have picked it up yet. So it's sort of like maybe a side scroll in Zelda dungeon. I don't know if that's over simplifying it a bit. Yeah, I kind of agree. I don't know if they're actually doing a virtual console on the Switch at all. There we go, I think I just picked the hammer up. Or maybe not, there's more hammers. This is one of them rooms where you have to try and hope that you don't find the bad guy that's hidden in one of these boxes. Um, as for Game Boy games on the Switch, they might introduce them as part of that online, paid online service thing. Maybe. I know they're doing NES and SNES games. It would make sense to do portable games as the Switch is a portable console. And the fact that the Wii U had Game Boy Advance games. I always thought that was a bit weird that the Wii U had GBA games but the 3DS didn't. I guess it's because of the Ambassador program. Um, but even so, I suppose the 3DS has lots of really good Game Boy games. I've actually been playing a lot of uh, Pokemon Crystal on the 3DS recently. Uh, let's see what we can do here. May I help you? We have everything. If by everything you only mean three things. Let's pick up a hammer. And I don't think I've got enough money for anything else. Let's see. No, I don't have any money for anything else. Hope I made the right choice there. So let's carry on going. There must be an end to this level. Well, unless it's all just one big open stage. Really don't know anything about this game at all. So, Okay, so... Was that the end of the stage? Stage 1-1? One, one? Maybe? Don't know. I'll save anyway, yes. Let's save. So if this is stage two, yeah, stage one, two. Yeah, that's true, actually. The Wii U did have DS games. I never actually downloaded any, um, but I did hear they actually play really well. And you can use the Wii U gamepad as the bottom screen and the TV as the top screen, which does sound really cool. Or you can also do it so that the DS is... Um, is sort of displayed around the games and if I was to do any videos of DS games that's probably the best way I could do it at the minute is to download the games on the Wii U until I manage to get a capture card for the DS at some point in the future that would be really cool but I haven't actually looked at what uh, DS games are available on the Wii U so I might actually go and have a look later 
and see what you can actually download on there because that might be pretty fun to have a look and see what's on there if you guys know of any uh, DS games on the Wii U that are worth checking out let me know I do still have the Wii U plugged in even though I don't actually use it that often um, oh we're back in here again I, uh, I want a key but I can't afford it so I think you sort of get the money here by killing the enemies and picking the hearts up and killing all these snakes yeah that's that's death I remember he was a nuisance on the NES game let's see what we get here oh this is a good place to pick up more money I suppose and hammers although I don't know how to use the hammers yet let's just pick them all up and a key! Yay, maybe I won't need to buy one in the end. So it says I've got a key, I've got some sort of credit card, and I've got 11 hammers. But I don't know how to use them, I'm pressing select and nothing's happening. Yeah, so I don't really know what to do there. I'll maybe do one or two more levels and might try a different game. Not too sure what I think about this. It's it's okay. Uh, but maybe I need the instructions to really figure out what I'm supposed to do. I did hear a lot of people really like it though, so it's good that I've given it a go at least. Um, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you think this game's any good or not, or if you've played any of the other Kid Icarus games. Let me know what you think about them as well. How do I get in there? Uh, it doesn't look like I can crawl. Maybe I'll have to come back to that. Dun, 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 dun. Is that the end of the level? That's the end of that stage. I'll do two more maybe. So this is level 1-3. And they all pretty much look the same. They're all just extremely tall dungeon type things. With loads of doors that take you into little caves. Although this one looks a bit different. Can you endure this intense training? Oh my god, the floor or the walls attack me. It's like something out of Mega Man. Uh, yeah, intense training. All I have to do is just stand here and keep pressing attack and up. Uh, yes, I managed to endure it. Your training is complete. Way to go, Pit. Take one of these special weapons. Oh, there's three to choose from. Uh, so a better bow, uh, maybe fire arrows, fire arrows, and I've got no idea what that one on the end is. Let's try this. In order to use this weapon, you must have at least two of your life blocks filled. Okay. You gonna let me have it? Do I get to pick a different one? No, that's it. Okay. Well, thanks for nothing. I think I got that. Let's see. Yeah, I did get it. So now I've just got to fill my life up, which is maybe from picking these hearts up. But all I thought this does was like drop little hammers on the screen. And the hearts aren't life, because... Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, I don't think the hearts are life. The hearts sort of give you money in the game, unless you can exchange that money for life somehow. I'm not really sure. I might change the colour schemes. See what other options I've got. Uh, is that the right button? No, that's to set your own color palette. I do love the Super Game Boy, the way it gives you all these different options. The first one's a color picker, yeah. So, I think this game's one that recommends a color palette. So you've got original Game Boy, you've got a few different colors. That's the one it recommended, this F here. I think H, uh, the last one, this one, gives you the sort of original Game Boy look. Um, that one's usually the one that gets played on the Super Game Boy. But these ones all look a bit weird. I quite like using that one actually. Um, maybe I'll keep it on that for this game though. They're probably right, it probably looks the best. Yeah, that one. I'll leave it on that. It's just fun to play around with. So, do one more level, then I'll pop another game in. If anyone's watching and you want to pick a game for me to play, let me know which one you want to see from the list on the side, and I'll put that one in next. Uh, 
Um, or if no one replies, then I'll just pick one at random. Uh, I'm not really sure where to go. And there's weird jellyfish things now. Maybe they're jellyfish. Ah, uh, maybe that wine there is health. Yeah, looks like it. Although I don't actually have two health bars yet, so I can't even use that magic that I just got. Oh god, there's a lot of enemies out. So I presume the exit for all the levels is just right at the top of all the stages. We'll see. So, what's in here? Look for a hidden door above this stage's entrance. Does that mean I have to go back to the start? Uh, I don't think I can be bothered to do that. I'm just going to keep on climbing. Let's see what's in there. And another set of random boxes. No! Let's leave. So yeah, I'll just keep going up to the top. Oh no, I'm falling! Oh, and I'm dead. Da -da 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 -da. Alright, last life. Then I'll play a different one. Oh, at least it didn't start me from the beginning. That's not too bad. Uh, if anyone's played this game before, let me know. Did you ever have it when you were growing up? Um, do you have any nostalgia for the game? Obviously, this is my first time ever playing it. Um, and I can see why. If you had it when you were little, you'd probably really love it. Oh, hopefully I didn't just waste a key going into that door there. Let's keep going. So hopefully I'll pick up some more uh, Game Boy games on Sunday when I go back to the expo again. I'm always really excited to see what I can find there. Ah, oh, there we go, that was my last life. Not doing too good. But, yep, no problem, I'll put Mystical Ninja in next. Right, game over. Let's uh, turn it off. And sorry if that's just making a noise here. There it is, the Mystical Ninja starring Goey One. So let's put this in. I have played this one for a little bit. I've got to say the graphics are really nice. Really love the graphics in it. Might need to blow on the cartridge a few times. Let's see if that boots up. And it takes a while because it's going through all the weird um, SCART to HD adapters and things. But yeah, looks like it loaded up okay. Or it did, and then it disappeared. I need to reset it. That's weird, it came up with the title screen. Right, Konami. Or it might be because I'm trying to play it in 60 hertz and it's a PAL game. Oh no, it's okay. It loaded that time. There we go. So this is The Legend of the Mystical Ninja. The only Mystical Ninja game I've ever played, actually. I know that people say the N64 ones are really good. Um, I've never actually played any of them, so here we go. Oh, that went too fast. What are you talking about? You know about that beautiful girl? Oh, you mean the ghost woman? Of the temple. Yeah, that's the one. He looks a bit weird. <laughs> Something terrible has happened. Oh no, zoom into his face. Oh no! Hey, no close-ups. That's no way for a good ghost to act. She shouldn't hurt people. That ghost has some nerve. I'll show her that I'm a brave man. Talk is cheap. Let's go. I'm with you, Dr. Yang. <laughs> what a strange intro. And a nice little bit of Mode 7 there. And we're off to Warlock Zone 1, whatever that means. Mystical Ghost. So here we go. And yes, made by Konami uh, in 1993, I think it said. So I'm not too sure what I'm supposed to be doing. I remember playing it a little bit before and you can sort of beat people up to get money and you can find lucky cats on the floor um, and yeah random people with fish and now I've got a pipe so I don't really know what's going on but let's go in the store and see if we can actually buy anything yet. 
Apparently this game's really good in uh, mul in multiplayer. So, welcome! We have everything you need. Would you like to buy something? Yes. You can get some straw sandals, some pizza, or some bombs. Let's get some straw sandals, because maybe that will give me extra uh, defense or speed or something. Um, Kid Ying. Bombs, zero, straw sandals, two. Don't know how to actually use the straw sandals. Um, no. Okay, so I can throw money at people as well. I don't know why I'd want to waste money, but apparently that's an option. And you can pick up these scrolls as well. I'm not sure what the scrolls do. And there's that lucky cat I was talking about earlier. Oh, the lucky cat apparently uh, powers up your weapon by the looks of it. So you can hit things further away. Let's see what's down here. I don't know if the N64 games play the same as this one, but I have heard that they're really good. I definitely like the music and the graphics in this game. It's, it's really nice. So, I'm a fortune teller. I'll tell you. You are a hero of this story. Aren't you? You will do a good job throughout your long journey. Great. Really, really helpful. Thanks a lot. So, we'll carry on. Hopefully I'm going the right way. I presume we can go up as well. We will open soon. Just a moment. Apparently they're not open, even though I just walked in. So, looks like this is a dead end. Yeah. We could admire some nice water effects, at least. Oh, no. And I think when I get hit, my weapon sort of goes back to how it was before. Because now I've only got a little pipe to hit people with. I wonder if there's a run button. I haven't tried the other buttons yet. They all seem to do the same thing. Uh, apart from L and R, that swaps to throwing coins or using your weapon. Uh, let's go back this way and see if I can go up the top of the screen. Uh, I don't think they're actual rooms, they're just random background decorations. Yeah, so I can go over that bridge there. Let's see what's over here. There's someone. A strange cloud is coming from the north. I'm scared. And she doesn't even change her expression or the way she's looking. Is she going to go anywhere? Oh, no. Did I get kicked out? Oh, maybe she's the ghost girl. Let's pick these coins up. I wonder if I can go back over there now. Or is it too haunted? Oh, no, it's okay. I can carry on. There's just ghosts everywhere. With all the fuss over the ghosts, nobody's hiring. These are just some pointless rooms. They don't actually let you do anything. It's kind of cool that they give you a little bit of backstory, a bit of character to the town, so that's nice. Let's go in the restaurant and see if there's anything in here. Welcome. Everything is delicious here. Would you like something to eat? Yes. So I can have a bowl of noodles, I can have something, or I can have some sushi. Let's have some sushi. Thanks. I think that gave me some extra health, which is always good. And there's a few different types of ghosts here. And I don't, want, don't know what that is, a little porcupine ghost or a tumbleweed ghost or something. And these ones are spinning around. I don't know what the scrolls do yet either. They don't really seem to do anything. If you know what they do, let me know, unless I can figure it out at some point. Uh, okay. This is dangerous territory. Be careful. Proceed with caution. Oh, cool. Now it's turned into a side-scrolling game. Uh, yeah. Die. Yeah, it's got a lot faster as well, rather than the sort of overhead sections. This is pretty nice. Let's take these guys out. Yeah, still don't know what the scrolls do. Do they actually do anything at all? It says I've got zero there. Maybe they're like special attacks or something. Is there any bombs or anything like that? Oh yeah, I remember I remember this section when I was playing it before, because you can <laughs> slide around like that on your belly, which I thought was really funny. I love the graphics, they're really nicely detailed. Love the animation on the grass there. Oh no, I missed that lucky cat. Whoa, what happened there? I think hitting that bell destroyed all the enemies. Give me, a look, give me another lucky cat. There's one. Hopefully they don't disappear. 
Oh, that one didn't actually make any difference. What is that? Big umbrella thing. Go away. I love how responsive this game is. The controls feel really nice. And it has such a weird, wacky atmosphere to it as well. Definitely makes me want to get the other games in the series, but maybe I should put a bit more time into this one first. Because you know what I'm like, I buy too many games and never get around to playing them. Hence why I'm starting to do a few more live streams. If anyone watches or not, they're going to be up on my channel after anyway, so... I'll put them in some sort of live stream archive for you to find. So uh, if people want to check out some of the streams that I've done in the past, I'll make a playlist so you can go and check them out. So I'll just think of this as recording Let's Plays, I suppose, but with a few different games in each one. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, at NintendoWii, feel free to leave me a message if you want to see any games in particular, and I'll stream them. Um, I might make this a regular thing, I might not. Um, just depends on how much time I have and what other plans I've got for the channel. Because I do want to keep making uh, regular weekly videos as well. Uh, I am really, at least for this year, I've sort of set myself a challenge of trying to make a video every week. Just to see if anything really sticks and see what people like. Because it's pretty much impossible to, fi to figure out how to actually make it on YouTube, how to actually get anywhere. For some reason, I have no idea like what videos actually get any views and which ones don't. It just seems completely random. So, let me know what videos you like out of the ones I've done, or you know which ones are worthwhile making, which ones bore the pants off you. Um, my last one about speedrunning didn't do too well. I don't know if that's because it's sort of a niche topic anyway, but I just do them for fun, so I'm not really too bothered. But it'd be nice to get a bit more exposure. Um, I don't know what that was, I just picked up a little elephant and I shouldn't have jumped there, I didn't realise that was actually um, like um, spikes on the floor or something. I guess that's one thing about the graphics being really detailed, you can't really tell what hurts you and what doesn't too easily. And it looks like we've made it to the first boss. Is it the ghost girl or is it just a random ghost? It is, indeed, the ghost girl. And she's sp spinning plates, of course. And it's uh, very much a Zelda boss. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, let's play tennis with a ghost girl. Where where do you want to continue? Elephant or raccoon dog? What does that even mean? Let's continue with the elephant. Whatever that means. I think that was the right decision, because it looks like we're back fairly far into the stage. Sorry, just my phone going off there. Yeah, remember to jump over them. Gives me a sort of ghouls and ghosts vibe. This part of the level does anyway. Hopefully I can get a lucky cat, because I don't really want to go into the boss with such a short range weapon. Ooh, popcorn. <laughs> Thank you. Mmm. Even better. Well, you said there, I'd like to see Warrior Land for some time. Yeah, no problem. I love the Warrior Land games. I actually picked the first one up at the expo as well. I've got it here, but I didn't put it on the list because it is a game I've already played before. And I sort of wanted this to be all new experiences for me. But yeah, definitely I'll stream some Warrior Land in the future. Um, might stream the one on the Wii as well because I really love that one. The Shake Dimension. Or shake it if you're in America. I'm not doing too well dodging these. Oh no. Game over. From the end of the previous journey. Where's that going to send me? Oh, it sent me right back to the start. That's not fair. Lucky cat. So, I'll probably give it one more go, um, and then I'll move on to a different game. Might play UN Squadron next. Oh, I didn't know hitting that person would actually lose me money, that's not fair. So I'll try and save up a bit of money here and go to the shop. 
Although I'm still not entirely sure on how to actually... Oh god, I'm not doing too good. Maybe I'll just go straight there so I can actually try the boss again and you don't have to watch me grind in for coins. Because that's uh, not much fun. I like how the game mixes it up with these overhead style stages. And then the side on stages as well, that's really, that's really cool. I like that quite a lot. So we're back here again. And uh, now all the ghosts are going to come out. I don't know where that guy was going. Oh, apparently last time I just accidentally walked back into the last section. I didn't actually need to go back there. Yeah, you lucky cat. Right, I'm going to try and keep this yo-yo because I presume that's the best weapon you can get at this point. So let's just carry on going. Oh no! Right, I'm going to stay here until I get a cat again. There it is. Now let's get out of here. I should probably buy some health or something because I'm probably going to die. This is dangerous territory. Be careful and proceed with caution. I presume that's the other checkpoint. Oh, you can you can still sh shoot up. Oh no, that was bad. Okay, Let's try and focus a bit more this time. Not really much to do now. Um, try and find lucky cats, I suppose. It sort of reminds me of something like um, the Wonder Boy games as well. Just the sort of the way the coins fly out of the enemies and stuff. I'm sure if you've played it, you know what I'm sort of uh, referencing there. Kind of like Monster World 4 as well. Really amazing games. And if you haven't played it, definitely, definitely recommend the. Uh, the remake of um, Monster World 3? No, Dragon's Trap. Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap on the Switch. That remake was incredible. Like, really, really amazing remake. Oh, I've got a comment there. Which way of race is it? I've not seen the Game Boy 1, so I'd love to see that. Yes, it is actually the Game Boy 1. Because I'm playing it on the... All these games I'm going to be playing on the SNES. So it's just Game Boy and the SNES games that I've got listed here, so... I'll leave that out and I'll do that one next when I get a game over on this. Um, I did used to have Wave Race on the Game Boy many, many years ago um, when I was a kid. Uh, but I haven't played it in probably about 15 years, honestly. So I'm, it probably won't live up to my uh, memories of it. And I just found some sort of underground secret area. Let's see if there's anything worth picking up in here. Oh yeah. I forgot I could jump for some reason. Oh, don't say I'm stuck. How are you supposed to get over there? Super jump! There must be a button that I'm missing, because I can't run. I can't get past them either. That's alright, no problem. Nice of you to join the stream. They're there to be chosen. But first I have to kill some weird floating lampshades. Or umbrellas. And find more lucky cats. And I'm definitely going to die on the boss because I really haven't got much health left already. Ah, go away. Come on, give me some health. I don't even know if you can get health, you might just have to... Um, let's see if I've got anything. Straw sandals. Don't know what it means. Uh, maybe I should have bought some bombs as well, that might have helped with this boss. So I think the boss is just up ahead anyway. And of course I've got an elephant. I think that was the checkpoint for this section. 
Come on! Yay! Can I get him from there? I don't want to stand on there because that's how I died last time. Oh no! That's not fair! Okay, well that's game over. I'm going to put Wave Race in now. This seems like a really fun game though. I think I'd need to concentrate a bit more to actually get anywhere. Or maybe play it with a friend because it is a co-op game. So, Anyway, that was just a quick look at Mystical Ninja for the SNES. There it is. One of the most expensive games I picked up at the London market and it's definitely worth it from what I've played so far. And I'll definitely go back and play some more in the future. So hopefully this works first time. The Super Game Boy can be a bit picky when it's trying to pick up the Game Boy games. Let's see. Yeah, it did. So here we go, this is Wave Race. Um, like I said, a game I probably haven't played in about 15 years. Which is just crazy to think. Maybe even longer than that. Um, yeah, so let's just put my name in. I might need to change the controls around. Yeah, I'll just switch these around. Don't know why it starts on type B. Don't know why anyone would use the controls that we're own. It doesn't make any sense. So we've got two options here. We've got circuit and we've got slalom. Uh, let's try circuit. So they were really trying to up themselves from Mario Kart here by the looks of it. Because it's not 50, 100 and 150 cc. The lowest you can do is 550, then 650 and 800. So let's start off with what's possibly the easiest one, 500 cc. So we're in the Bahamas and there's two laps. So let's go. I might just pause when this has started to change the colour scheme. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah, just so the C actually looks blue. Let's see which one of these we can choose. Um, if any. None of these really look right. You can always play it in black and white, but maybe that one. Maybe I'll set my own colour scheme. Well, that, that one's okay, I suppose. Let's go with that, but change... Um, what can we do? Change... Give it a bit more... Uh, no, that's going to change the colour of the um, menu as well. So let's make these ones black. And let's make... Lighter. Yeah, that looks good, I think. So it looks a little bit more like um, like water now. So here we go. Hopefully, it, hopefully I'm doing this right. Wow, it's very slow. You would say Mario Kart would feel slow? I think 50cc Mario Kart feels a lot faster than this. And I think I just missed out a big chunk of the level there, accidentally. Um, yeah, it's saying I need to go back. Uh, how do I restart? I'm going to restart that, because I think I messed up pretty bad. Let's try again. So yeah, if you've played any of the other Wave Race games, um, you have to weave in and out of the cones, I think. If it's anything like the uh, N64 or the GameCube ones. This one actually came out before them. This was the first Wave Race game. Um, and yeah, you can tell it's pretty simple. Yeah, there you go. So if you pass them on the right side, you'll get a little smiley face in the box. Uh, does that count? Yeah, I think so. I don't know if that's a power up there or something. It kind of plays like a really dumbed down version of RC Pro Am on the NES and the Game Boy. I guess they kind of got the physics right with the way it um, 
turns the corners and sort of the more you hold the button down the sharper it turns. But I wouldn't really call it water physics or anything. It's very, very basic. And it seems a bit choppy, the way the scrolling works, which is a bit weird. But I'll stick at it for a few races at least. Then maybe I'll pop in one more game, and then maybe call it a night. I'll stop at 9 o'clock, I think that'll give me an hour of streaming, which is pretty good. And like I said earlier, I might try and make this a more regular thing. Um, so I'm in one of my videos in the future I'll mention that if I do decide to do that. So there we go, that was the first stage. And apparently the fastest lap was 17 seconds. I don't know how many circuits there are, maybe four? Wow, so apparently this is Hawaii. Looks really different to the Bahamas, doesn't it? So here we go. And everyone's trying to hit me out of the way. I kind of wish I'd picked a faster CC now, because this is really slow. I'll try and aim for one of them. Whee! Oh, that's a bit faster. For a second. Ah, oh, this kind of makes me wish they'd done a sort of top-down F-Zero game on the Game Boy. I think that would have been really cool. <laughs> Love the way the water spray looks like fire. Yeah, I guess, I guess you're right. Maybe think of them as spaceships or something instead of jet skis. Might make it a bit more entertaining. But yeah, like I was saying, I think it'd be really cool if they made a top-down F-Zero game. Imagine this, but really fast and on sort of futuristic tracks. I think that would actually be really cool. Sort of like Micro Machines, but more futuristic. And maybe with the camera pulled out a bit more so you could actually see the corners come in. Which was a huge problem with, um, with Micro Machines, I felt like. You just couldn't see what was coming up ahead, and it was too easy to just fly off the course. And I'm in first. Just about. Well, that was a close race. <laughs> oh, it kind of made me want to play F-Zero now. Maybe I'll make that my next stream. So, go to the next round. Wait, that, that jet ski was actually on top of the map then. I think it's really struggling to update the map because obviously on the Game Boy it has a bit of ghosting so it wouldn't actually look like it's flickering like it does on here. It would actually look like it's just one solid object that's sort of see-through. Okay, so apparently these arrows mean the, the water current. I guess that's a nice way of doing it because they couldn't actually animate the floor, so... Just put in arrows on it. It makes sense. It's very prim primitive, but it makes sense. So I actually quite like the, the way it feels. The controls, they're actually quite good. I uh, don't know why it says I'm in first there. Clearly in third. Let's see if I can pick up one of them items on the track. I can't remember where I saw it though. I was about to say they're in the dirt, but they're in the, I guess it's shallower water. I'm not sure why there would be a path in the water to follow. Unless they just spilt ink everywhere and this is like the leftovers of the ink. No idea. I like how everyone's always sort of on the same screen, so it really feels like you're having a sort of battle to be in first place. So sort of making the tight corners really does make a difference. And there we go, I finished up in second there. And I'd love to see that F-Zero, maybe like the first GTA game. Yeah, I really do think that would be really cool. It's kind of a shame they never did that. Although I do love the Mode 7 F-Zero, but obviously the original Game Boy couldn't... Couldn't really do Mode 7 properly. I mean, they did try. There's a really, really well-made Game Boy Color game with actually um, going into the screen like that. 
But it wasn't actually done through Mode 7, it was just loads of different uh, bitmap images playing one after the other. Sort of like a really, really fast slideshow to sort of simulate it. And then you would just control the sprite over the top. So it wasn't quite the same thing, but it did look really cool. I can't remember what the game was now though. But I think if you search like graphically impressive Game Boy Color games on YouTube, you'll probably find it. I'm actually kind of tempted to make that F-Zero game myself now. Because I have been learning a bit about programming for the Game Boy. And that might be a really nice little challenge to set myself. So I might do a bit of research later on. And maybe you'll see a Game Boy F-Zero game in the future. A nice little homebrew project. That would be definitely a good reason to get the EverDrive as well. In my last video I mentioned that I wanted to get an EverDrive for the Game Boy. Um, because I've been doing a few ROM hacks for the Mario Land game, uh, Mario Land 1. So it might be really fun once I start looking into programming my own game for it, to sort of make a top-down racer. But we'll see, I'm not promising anything yet because it is really complicated. So I'll probably make this my last race on here. And then play a bit of UN Squadron and then I'll call it a night. So you've got me for a bit over an hour I think. Let's see if I can... Yeah, I'm really, really not doing very well on this course. There's some tight corners I'm not doing too good at. Oh, I'm going to end up in last place. Oh no! That was a very quick spin out that didn't really cause any problems whatsoever. So, is that everything? Or is there another one? Let's just see what happens here. Yay! So there was four races and I did come in first overall with 14 points. So that's not too bad. And we get to see a nice championship screen at the end as well. Congratulations first. And then it says you must get 15 points. Try again. And I got 14 points. Apparently I didn't get enough. But seems fairly fun for what it is. Really, really basic um, top-down racing game. But if you like Nintendo and if you like Wave Race, it's definitely worth checking out. So now we're going to end by taking a little look at a game that I've been recommended many, many times and it's something that I've been wanting to pick up for ages. I'm really glad I finally got it. UN Squadron for the SNES. And hopefully it loads up straight away. And I've played this one a little bit but it is really, really difficult. Hopefully you can't hear all the... Oh my god, yeah, you can definitely hear that. I was going to say hopefully you can't hear the traffic outside, but... Clearly they don't know how to be quiet. Yeah, it's not working. Reset. No, not going to work. Sorry, give me one second. I know you're not supposed to blow in your SNES games like that, but maybe it's a psychological thing. Yeah, there we go. So this is the last game we're going to play today, and then I'll call it a night. This is UN Squadron, made by Capcom. The fighting in this area is ferocious. This game was based on a manga called Area 88, which was released in Japan. And over here it was rebranded to UN Squadron. Maybe because no one knew what Area 88 was. Only a madman would take on this mission. Lucky they found me. First of all, I have to say I love the graphic style in this game. And I love the music. From what I've played so far, anyway. I haven't got very far, but I know people really love this. And I can definitely see why with all the different branching paths and everything. It's really in-depth for a, for a shooting game. And I love this intro here, so I'm just going to let this play out before I start playing. There we go. We've got a nice unicorn on fire on the starting screen as well. What more could you want? So we'll jump straight in. We've got three different characters here. We've got Shin Kazuma. We've got Mickey Skymon. And Greg Gates. Um, let's see. A specialist by nature, Shin quickly masters most normal weapons. Let's go with this. Select your target area. 
The target is the frontline base. Take it and make it a sword for thwarting Project 4, whatever that means. So let's get straight into the first level. And here you get to choose um, different upgrades for your ship. Um, obviously, as I haven't got much money yet, I can only use the basic one, which is called a cruiser. And I can afford either a conventional bomb or cluster shots. Shots that fire in every direction. So I think I'll start with that one. Let's see if that's any good. And here we are in the first level. So, at the moment it looks just like a typical shooting game. Uh, we've got a fairly basic power-up system. The cluster sort of just makes the bullets explode in every direction, as you'd probably expect. The music is brilliant, hopefully you can hear it okay. I did adjust the audio slightly so that the microphone's a bit louder, but hopefully you can still hear the game. I've got it quite low here so it doesn't interfere with it, um, but yeah, hopefully you can hear it. Because it is really good and it was definitely one of the things that I picked up on the first time I played it was just how good the soundtrack is. It's also quite a challenging game. I mean, it's nowhere near the level of something like Darius, but you can see there that you've got a little bit of health and it does regenerate over time. So if you don't get hit for a while, you can see there that it actually built back up. So. It's pretty forgiving as far as shoot 'em ups go, which isn't too bad. And there's that cluster bomb there, so I've got one left on this one. Use it because this guy does take a lot of hits, and obviously you can see these little missiles that are shooting out that you have to avoid as well. And there we go, it's down. So the levels are all quite short, as you can see. <coughs> as you can see, that one's finished already. Then you get a nice little mode 7 finishing screen. This is just the beginning, and obviously they have to do a one-liner. And sort of like Star Fox 2, you now have to defend your base by picking one of these different areas here, so... I'm not sure what the difference is, but when you clear it, it gets that 88 thing, which I guess is the team that you're working for, so... The target is the enemy air force. We suspect they have stealth capabilities, so be careful. So now I'm actually going to fight the enemies. And I've still only got enough money to use this basic cruiser ship. But I can afford a few more upgrades. So I can afford the ultimate weapon, called the Mega Crush. I can afford a bomb, or I can afford more cluster shots. We'll go for... I can actually afford all three of them. Just to be safe, I'll get all three of them. So now, we're going to fight one of the enemy airships. Um, which might be hiding in the clouds. I love the atmosphere on this level and the music, it's just really, really cool. And I think that's... Oh, I thought it was a 1-up, but it actually just blows everything else up on the screen. Which is always good. And there we go, got another little power-up. It's not too crazy like a lot of shooters, it only powers up a little bit, it gives you a little bit more extra power. Um, yeah, it's not like a bullet hell shooter where your bullets just take up the entire screen. Or it doesn't seem like something like Gradius either, where you can get really overpowered and then lose it all. So in that sense, it does seem like quite a fair shoot em up which I definitely like. Um, there's not too much going on on the screen. So maybe I'd definitely recommend this game to someone who's fairly new to the shoot em up genre, or just sort of wants to, wants to get into it. Seems like a really good starting point. It's not too difficult, um, but it definitely has a lot of variety, which is always good. And an amazing soundtrack and graphics. What more could you ask for? And it's a great shoot 'em up on the SNES, which is a system that's not really too well known for its shoot 'em up library. So, pretty good all round, to be honest. You can't go wrong with this one. And I really wish I'd picked it up sooner. I'd honestly been meaning to get this game for years, and I only just got it. And I have no idea why it took me so long. It's not even that expensive. And you can't hold the button down, which is something I find a little bit weird. You can hold it down for a short time, <clears throat> but then it stops. So you can either sort of hold it down and keep letting go, or you can do what I was doing and just keep tapping it. Um, I remember this boss being a bit annoying, because you have to keep watching out for these little... You have to keep watching out for them, else that will happen. So. And then when you go back on this screen, you do have a chance to go to a different area. So this target's a battleship. 
called Minx. Its striking power is tremendous. Be careful or you'll be turned into a human torch. And we don't want that to happen, do we? So, still can't afford any of those ships. Let's go back for this one. And I think I only need one power up. I'm trying to save up a bit more money now. So I can afford a different ship. So, here we go. Actually, this controller does have auto fire, so I might turn this on just to save my thumbs from dying. Unfortunately, this controller I'm using does have a slightly wonky D pad. So, if you do see me moving sideways instead of up, that's why. It's not because I'm intentionally going into the enemy bullets or anything. But it's not too bad as long as I don't press too hard on it. And I do prefer this controller over the official one now, so I would just, just have plugged in an official SNES controller. But I do really like this SN Pro Pad. It's really nice. Because one of the main features is the fact that it's got turbo buttons. Which isn't cheating, because a lot of these games were on the turbo graphics as well, which does actually have built-in turbo buttons. And I just died. So we should probably go and try that one again before it gets too close to the base. Um, if I can get back over to it. Yeah. Right, let's go and try these ones one more time. I'll try a few more stages, and then we'll call it a night. So, thank you very much, everyone who was watching. We're going to get all the power ups for this one. It's going full, full steam ahead. And I'll try not to mess up with the D pad either. So, yeah, I don't know if the power ups just sort of stop working after a while, because they don't really seem to be doing much anymore, which is a bit strange. Um, there was an arcade version of this game. Which is a bit different. I don't think it has the branching levels that this one does. And maybe it's slightly more basic. It doesn't have the different sort of story missions or anything. I would be interested to play it though. Maybe I'll be able to find it one day in Japan. Area 88. So. Might look up some video of it after this. If any of you know what the difference is between the arcade one and the SNES one, let me know. It would definitely be interesting to find out what they changed or what they kept the same. Yeah, it is pretty unforgiving. It gets pretty crazy. Um, I guess the point is to replay the levels enough times to afford the better ships, which maybe have higher health. Because basically you can only take two hits and you're dead in this one. So you do have to be quite careful. And yeah, the power-ups don't really seem to do that much either. And the bullets do come at you pretty fast. But you do also move pretty fast around the screen, so it's not too bad. Although it's not as cool as something like Thunder Force, where you actually get to control how fast you want to go by pressing the select button. So here we are again. Just got to try and dodge these um, bullet things so that it shoots out. These, whatever they are. And obviously watch out for the bit that comes out the bottom. Ah, uh, no. Uh, yeah, this is actually really, really difficult. Yay! Hopefully that's the end of that level. Yay, mission two clear. I got some extra coins for it. And it, tells, and it counts up how many special weapons you didn't use as well, which is nice. So there we go, that's the second stage complete. You guys chose the wrong team. I'd be interested to actually read the manga as well. So let's go and try another base. Um, let's try the one in the forest. This target is the forest fortress. Don't get distracted by the large gun batteries. Just aim at the weak point. Good advice. Usually you should aim at the weak point. Uh, you don't have enough money. I almost do. So I'm only going to buy the... Um, whatever they're called. Because that's the only one I seem to be using anyway. So. I remember thinking this level has really nice graphics. I really like what they did with the background on this level. I always like the 16-bit sort of sunset graphics that they do with these games. I like the way they fade it into the clouds and out of it. And I love the music on this level as well, it's really cool. This is probably my favourite game that I picked up at, at the, uh, the last Retro Market. So I'll definitely be on the lookout for more shoot 'em ups Although... I'm sort of looking for more 32-bit games this year. Not this year, but, you know, this this event. 
instead of 16-bit games, because I've definitely got a lot of SNES and Mega Drive games that I haven't even played yet. So I don't want to sort of overdo it and then never get around to any of them. So I'll sort of be looking at PlayStation and Saturn games this time. And I'll be doing another tour as well, which I'll hopefully upload on Monday or Tuesday the week after. Oh, that was a bit horrible, the way they just came up like that. Ah, no! I'm going to die before I even get to the end of this one. Yeah, so I can't wait for the for the retro market, as always. And I'll obviously do ah, a game pickups video as well. So let's try once more, one more level. We'll go for the submarine here. Nuclear submarine called the Sea-Vet. Destroy it before it has a chance to launch its missiles at this base. Let's go. I can finally afford a different plane. Let's go with this one. Called the Tiger Shark. Thank you. Let's take care of it. You definitely want to go for this one? Yep. Oh, cool. And then we get a different set of power-ups. Launch missiles in five directions. It skims over the ground. Phoenix, it locks onto enemies, or a bomb is a conventional bomb. But I'll try the Phoenix, the lock on one, that sounds pretty good. So, this is going to be the last level that I try. So, this one seems a lot faster. Let's see if anything else has changed. There's one thing that's changed there's no enemies. Where is everyone? Oh, yeah, of course, I was waiting for a submarine. And there's some really. Oh my god, that was fast. That's not fair. Whoa! Okay, showing off mode 7 again. Just keep firing these missiles down at it, I suppose. If I stay near the top, it... I was about to say if I stay near the top it won't be able to get me. But... Ooh, a bit of slowdown there. SNES can't quite handle everything going on at once. It's not quite as good as the Mega Drive for these sort of games. I think they had to sort of limit themselves with what they could put on the screen at one time. Else it either goes really slow where everything starts flickering. I'm sure you've seen that before. Right, so I'm out of special weapons now, so I'm just gonna have to try and shoot it and hope for the best. Ah! Oh my god, that was close. Danger, danger! Oh no, I'm dead. So I'm gonna end it there, I think. Um, no, I don't live in London, I live near Birmingham, so it takes a little while to get there, but it's about two hours on the train, so it's not too bad. There's loads of cool game shops around Birmingham as well, so I did actually do a game shopping video before, if you want to go and check that out on my channel. So, anyway guys, that was just um, a bit of gameplay of some of the games that I picked up at the last event. If you enjoyed this, I'll probably do another one with some of the games that I picked up at the next event when I go there on Sunday. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll let you all know if I'm going to be doing streaming more regularly in the future. So, that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Um, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.